socialist. Good evening, welcome. This, I have a question for everybody, and if you know the answer, well, you don't have to qu call in or anything, because who was the last president to say, or the only president to say, the buck stops here? That was Reagan. Shoot, I do know, but I can't think of the name. I think it was Harry Truman. Harry Truman? <laughs> Harry Truman. We have a guest, I'm, and you're not going to get to see him, so he's going to stay silent. He the least of he Are you going to go on the air at all later? You're going on with Murray, right? Okay. Oh, okay. You'll um, get to see him later on. Murray will be right. on after us. So since, if it was Harry Truman, okay, um, who said the buck stops here. Now, Harry Truman, for history people who want to know something, and I, we've said this, I've said this before. When Harry Truman left office, he and his wife, Bess, got in their car, and they were driving back to Missouri. And Harry Truman was not a, a wealthy man. He was a haberdasher. And he was going to go back to his, I guess, haberdasher, his, his business. What is that? A uh, hat maker. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> Hat maker for a president. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't have much money. And the people who came after Harry Truman, the president and all the senators and congressmen, were saying, we've got to do something for him. I mean, he can't go back to doing what he was doing. I mean, this is, we've got to create a job for him. So they called him up and then said, Mr. Truman, I don't know if they said Mr. Former Vi President, Mr. Vice President, whatever, back then. Because um, I don't like the term, I really don't like the term of Trump or Obama or Clinton or Carter being called President, Mr. President. No, you're not. You're the former President. We already have a President as much as whatever. Anyway, they called him up and said, we want you to do something. And they told him what the job was going to be. And Truman said, what you want is the president. I'm not the president. And he was right. He was right. So as far as I'm concerned, ever since he, w I think he was the last one to ever say the buck stops here. Because every politician lies. It doesn't matter if you are Republican, Democrat, conservative, independent, green, blue, whatever you want, they all lie. And it's not just presidents, it's congressmen, it's senators. You've got a bunch of liars in, in government today. And granted, Trump was a liar. Of course he was a liar. He was a big liar. Yeah, he didn't get but to where he was by not being a liar, but you gotta, you gotta understand that this is the way I look at it. And I'll go back to my old statement about uh, Daly in Chicago when he was mayor of Chicago. Yes. When it came time for money, he would go, one dollar for you, two dollars for me. One dollar for you, two dollars for me. But the reason people loved him was because he was doing stuff for the people. How much he lied, I don't know. But I, I really don't like to think that every single politician is a liar. They all, no, and I believe there are some Everybody good in this world has been a liar at right. one time or another. Um, you're absolutely right. And I really want to believe there are some honest people out there in, in politics. Politics is a nasty, dirty business. It is. And it's, it's not right. And I don't think Joe Biden should have ever been in office for 48 years. He's been a liar since day one. They've got this new guy. They're all going against this Republican, George Santos. The man should never have been allowed to be— Did you hear what— uh, To be, yes, between him and Romney? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he should never have been allowed in, in, the, con in the Congress. Yeah, but, but he was voted in. He lied to his constituents, and the constituents want him to resign. He's not going to do that. So, well, they can impeach him, I'm sure. No, you can't impeach 
you can't impeach a, a senator. I don't think – maybe if you can throw – well, you can ask him to resign or something. I never heard you be – anybody impeaching a senator or a congressman or – a congressman. Well, they can take away person. all the committees that. Yes, and he, he doesn't. I don't know if he even has a committee right now. Because they did it to AOC. Well, they took I've got her. that too. They did and not the, to, the other one there. Not to AOC, but um, anyway. So we had. I, I bought the New York Post, which I honestly believe is a decent newspaper. They have been. They lie to us. I'm sure they do. All newspapers lie. But not like the day. The day is a rag. And I don't understand how they get all these medals and, and awards and everything. Because it's, it really, uh, they are so far left, it's sickening. That's just like why the New York Times, just like the Washington Post. But, <clears throat> and and what's going on right now at Twitter, uh, at, on, the, on the Hill, they uh, have these not meetings, these questionings against former Twitter executives. Yeah, but I've been watching some of that. Yeah, and it's, it's amazing that th they didn't know anything and they're saying, oh. They knew. Th of course they knew. They knew. I mean, not everybody in the, in the Twitter business knew. No, but I the believe people of the people, knew. the lower people didn't. It's always the upper people, the execs. I really, you know, I believe. And the same thing with what's going on. So, did you watch the State of the Union? I started to. I couldn't. And then I, f I figured I'd wait and hear the... I, and what you brought up, yes, I heard about people yelling liar. And, well, because Joe has been a liar, he has lied his way right through everything. And the reason I bought the Post is because I saw this on, um, on TV, what, what was on Monday that was being printed in the post, get set for Joe's lies, and they brought up six issues. And I, if you want, I would like to go through that, and you can tell yeah. me what you think, too. And the guy came on, back on, on TV on Wednesday, and he said, he, th he believes Joe lied at, at, at five out of six of them. He wasn't sure about the six. So, if you don't mind, let's, you know, because we have so much to talk about, right? Yeah. Um, anybody wants to call in, you're certainly more than welcome to. I know you want to do more of local politics, but. Well, I'm going to jump into some of that okay. when we get done. So out of the six, the first one was Biden has reduced the budget deficit by $1.4 trillion. I now, that's the reason it's not true. Biden says after his first year in office where he increased the budget over two trillion, two point seven or something like that, then the second year, this second year was another one point some odd trillion, five trillion or whatever it was. So it got up to four point two trillion or something and they backed off or something like that. So he said, oh, well, we, we reduced the 1.4. You didn't reduce a 1.4 because you took away what you were, you were reducing to begin with. That's the first lie, okay? Second lie, Biden inherited an economy, uh, economy in free fall. Everybody well, know knows in true. there who has half a, br no, let's say 10% brain that that's not even true. Under Trump, and you may not like the man, but what he did for America, because he's a true American. He cares more about America than any other president we've had since Reagan. I firmly okay. believe this. We had the lowest unemployment for all ethnicities across the board. That's true. We had gasoline at two dollars and fifty nine cents. I saw it. I've seen it. When he was in office we had it down to that. lower one almost a dollar ninety nine. Yeah. Under uh, that was that wasn't we had the borders secured, we had Russia in check, China in check, 
Um, here comes Joe Biden. Oh, cancels day one. He cancels all oil contracts, all drilling, and contracts. drilling and everything like that. What does that do to inflation? We've spiked inflation. Let, let me jump in here. I want you to. Okay. It cracks me up because I hear him talking about um, the workforce, how all these jobs are coming out better than the last month, all this kind of stuff. And yet, the first thing he does when he goes into office is he lays off all these people. Their skills are to do with oil. Um, and some of them are probably in their 50s. I mean, the, the age goes all the way up to probably 50. I don't know how many people older than that could do that kind of job, but probably. But the thing is, he talks about how many jobs he brought in. He doesn't talk about how many jobs he got rid of. Now, I hear this, him talking about jobs, and yet um, Musk did it, let go of people. Uh, uh, Facebook's letting go of people. Um, I just read. Um, yeah, Apple is doing yep. it. Microsoft Walt is Disney doing it. Walt Disney is going to lay off yep. 4,000 people. Yep. So, and the jobs that he claims he's bringing in are the very same ones that he closed down right. now during the, the pandemic. He, right. So, so he, he isn't, in my eyes, unless I got this wrong, he hasn't created any jobs except for maybe in the government itself. That Yes. Because that's what government, a lot of presidents do. The only thing that was expanded was basically government jobs. And that goes against, technically, what the Constitution would have said. Of the people, for the people, and by the people. Government, when it was created, and it was, goes back to Washington, Madison, Monroe, Franklin, Jefferson, Government was, sup was supposed to be small. Yeah. And what has ruined governments over the centuries is that government has expanded and taken over everything that people have to rely on government, handouts, and therefore socialism. Now, I don't believe they said 10, 10 million jobs came back. Yeah. They were laid they off weren't and came created. back. They, they weren't, weren't created. created. They came back. And they said 2.2 million were created by in government. And I bet you if you looked it up, those 2 million that were created, like you just said, they were all in government jobs. So. Like 80-something uh, IRS agents. Right. I don't really believe the government. Government creates jobs for the government. Yeah, they don't create jobs for any private sector. Those are the they're people not supposed who own. To. No, but those are the people who own the companies that are creating the jobs. So when he sets says that oh we create a job, it's a lie, it's a lie. And you want to you want to shrink government, cut all government agencies by a large amount. Now, let me ask you a question. If you cut them agencies, whether it's education or um, the abortion thing or, you know, whatever else that the government has control of and puts the money into it. Now, if you if they get rid of all of them and push it back to the state, mm -hmm. most states, I believe, would not be able to afford to do that. So they would have to get. I'm sure the government's going to give them money. So the only thing that changes is that the state has control of, we'll use education, it has control of the education. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot, I think a lot of states would rather have the government in control of I'm it. I'm sure they because would. Because they know the money will be there. But then you've got the government saying how people can be educated. That, what kind that, of, and that's, that's what's causing a problem. So some some can, some can be educated. Some can't possibly. Uh, you take a senior now. Um, oh, take me for instance. I'm an old old guy, and to retrain me to do some of the jobs that are out there would probably take a while if I could even do them. So but you know when they when they took the jobs away from the the pipeline people or all the oil people, whether out in the ocean or not, they talked about retraining them. When um, 
Hillary and them talked about closing down the coal mines, they said, we're going to retrain them. Not everybody's retrainable. Right. And not everybody can do the, the jobs that they want to train them for. And they don't want old people to do these jobs. You just said the key word. So they want the people. young people. Dennis, you're, you're 70 what? Two? Going to be. I'm going to be 70. And the government won't, re won't, won't retrain us. No. They're going to say it's time for you to retire. Now, yeah. if they tell us that it's time for us to retire, why are they telling what Joe Biden? What's some of the other lies? Okay. Third one. Inflation was high when Biden entered office. You know, this is, this this is, so is stupid. such a major lie because under Trump, inflation was somewhere around 2%. Immediately after uh, Biden comes in and cuts all these things, inflation starts to go up, right. and he blames the pandemic. If Trump was still president, I, I believe we still would have had Russia in check. We would have had China in check. They, Russia would not have invaded Ukraine. We would have had oil independence. Um, the border ch uh, under control. The wall would have been built. Right. Also, inflation would still have been very low because people are working. Now, if somebody would like to call me and explain something to me, why is, because I hear this on the news all the time, the more people that go back to work is inflationary. Does that make sense to you? It no. doesn't make sense to me, but they say it is. Well, they're probably meaning that when they go back to work, then they got to get a paycheck. But, but they're, they're spending paying taxes that money on more, that paycheck. They're spending more now with their paycheck than they did right. three years ago. So we know that's a lie. Yeah. Why do all these, why do all these people... Biden, Biden has brought down gas prices. No, he brought down his gas prices. And and, we and the people the people out there that say, well, he's bringing down the gas prices. Look, isn't that great? He's not no. bringing them down. You remember when it was around two dollars? Yeah. That's great. And we were self sufficient. We weren't buying oil from the Middle East. W there was a lot of things we weren't buying from China. He was making you know making it so that companies in China wanted to come back because they couldn't afford not to because of the tariffs. You know, before he became president that we were paying outrageous tariffs to send what we produced overseas. Right. And, and especially to China. And China wasn't spending hardly any, if any, tariffs to send their stuff here. Right. And what did Trump do? He reversed that. Yeah. And he, he did get some that. companies to well, come actually, back. Actually, if you ever get the chance, I'm only about 250 to 260 pages into a 400-page page book. It's called Never Give an Inch by Mike Pompeo. Mike Pompeo know, yeah. was the head of the CIA, and then he became um, the, the Secretary of State, I think the 70th Secretary of State. And if you really want to read a good book, it's not as dry as people, th I thought it was going to be like some of these um, uh, biographies and stuff. No, it's a good book. And I'm look. I mean, I, I read it. You do night. realize that a lot of these people ain't actually writing the book. He wrote the book. You sure? Yeah. He didn't have a ghostwriter with him. No, he may have had somebody yeah. help, but no, uh, he wrote it. Right. There's a, there's only one person on his, on that book. So everybody knows Hillary Clinton did not write her book. First well, of all, she you couldn't could sell a book <laughs> if she wanted to. <laughs> How embarrassing. Okay, Biden is doing all he can to secure the border. I have a bridge in Brooklyn for sale, if you believe that piece of garbage. Okay, so, so let me, on this topic, you had, um, uh, Vice President, I was gonna try to remember oh, her Kamala name. Harris? Yeah, now part of her deal was she was supposed to be the czar of the border. Right. Okay. Can we take get rid of that term czar? Oh, That's I know. A Russian that, that, term. No, that well, no, but Biden brought the czar yeah. thing into play. I get rid of that term. Um, the thing is, she refuses, or she has. I think she might have went to the close to the border. Right. But she refuses to go to the border. She don't want nothing to do with that. 
Now, I'm the president, and you're my vice president, and I say to you, you're going to be in charge of doing something about this border. And you tell me, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing the border. Shouldn't the next words out of the president's mouth be, either do the borders or you're out of work? That's right. Because I'm sure the president can fire the vice president. Um, yeah, possibly. Yeah, I think so. Or I, some way, I want, I'll see your re- yeah, I'll see your resignation on my desk tomorrow. Her popularity is even lower than his. Oh, I know it. And she thinks she's even going to be running again. They don't want her to run. She. They don't want about as use. She is probably the most useless person in Look, government today. The Democratic Party. I think they they got Biden in there by means that they say aren't true. We know, we think it's true, that it was all fixed. But anyways, um, they got Biden in there because the people around him, especially the, the environmentalist people, the, that whole climate thing people, um, they wanted to use him to get these things through. Right. He's a puppet. Yeah. And I don't even think he realizes what what the heck he's doing half the time. I believe that. I mean, we don't stand. I don't think we stand any anywhere in the world to where we were before. No, probably not. I, I don't uh, think people people look at us as, as a joke. I got no, another they look, comment. They look at him. So, okay, last one. Six. Biden is increasing domestic oil and gas production. Yeah, that's where they started booing him. The is that Democrats. Where they um, it's a lie. It's an absolute lie. And, and my friend told me, he's oh, well, don't you want to? No, my brother-in-law told me. He's, he's given more leases to oil, but they haven't gone through. Nothing is even gone through because the government is preventing them. No. But he sure, takes, he sure takes our reserve and, and gives, and it, gives it, away. it to China. And, and sends it to other countries. Right. I wonder if he even pay, charged anybody for it. That's the lowest it's been, I how think, since 19-whatever. Uh, I don't understand how anybody in the government let him get away with that. To, to take the reserve to bring the gas prices down just so he could get more votes. But it didn't bring and the gas? Well, in his mind and a lot of other people's minds, when it went from – Almost five dollars down to three fifty. Mm-hmm. That's lo- lowering the gas. But we didn't get none of that reserve gas. No. If we did, it wasn't much. It all went overseas. It went to Ukraine, to China, and uh, so. If you that w- should that stuff should not be touched. Right. For anything and, and except because if we okay now this is you know people say I'm conspiracy theorist and stuff and most of the time I am, but. <laughs> um, if we have an invasion in this country, and I'll tell you from here, here goes my um, yeah we I can do okay, that. Well, you we'll have all these young men, young men fight that are in perfect not perfect shape, but they're usually what's in the military coming across the border. You got people from all countries coming across the border. They they um, captured uh, five Chinese people that came across the border that weren't supposed to be into the country. Um, you have so many things that could happen if we were invaded in any way. And that's not far-fetched. People think there's no way we can be invaded. We're being set up to be invaded now. Absolutely. That's what I think is going on. And if We're going to fall from within, and that's what Khrushchev said. But that's history. That's history. We're going to fall from within. Khrushchev said it back in the 60s, early 60s. One of the longest-running um, empires was the Roman Empire. Mm-hmm. And they only lasted 250 years. And we are there a little bit past that. And supposedly. No, we're not even 250 years yet. Uh, I think we're pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. 2026. And now you got generals. This, this, this 2026, blows my mind. 2026, we will be 250 years old. You had people in power talking about, well, we're going to be in a war with China by 2025. What are you telling us that for? Why? Just get ready for it. Don't, why don't does this government. How much property can you buy in China? They're, well, I have to admit, they're fighting to try to stop it. The Republicans want to pass a bill, since now they got the House, they, um, to prevent China from buying any more Anymore? Any more? I would pass a bill saying 
China must relinquish any property that they own in the United States. They own farms. They're controlling farms. Right next to our silos. Yeah, right near the silo. Well, look, and you're saying, how can any of this happen? Look with the balloon mm. th that just happened. And it took, it took a week for him to take it down. It could have been taken down over Alaska. But even before Alaska. They, right. well, they were following that thing as soon as it hit the ocean Absolutely. by China. Supposedly. What, how do you know what to friggin' believe anymore? I mean, really. I mean, we think we know what we're talking about. Not, you know, sometimes we're wrong. But, uh, you know, you can't believe anything you're hearing from, from I, people I'll in tell power. You, I'm going to tell you something that people want. I try to be very truthful. I try not to lie. Yeah, but we still get things wrong once in a um, while. We get things wrong. But I honestly, I'll try, I try not to lie. And I have been, don't, I'm not, a, not somebody who should be put up on a pedestal or anything like that. But I, mean, I was, re I mean, I'm not even going to bring that up. But because um, I got to I got to you cannot trust this government. You can't even even in, when, in, w during Trump's time and stuff. You still can't trust the government when it was and Obama was miserable. I have so many people, African Americans, tell me that they agree with me. He was a terrible president. Well, he didn't do much for. He didn't do much for the for, for the African Americans. So we have a, a call. Oh, we do. I know. Uh -oh. Twenty-seven minutes in. Good evening, you're on. Hey guys. Hey Hi. John, how are John, you? How are we Don't doing? Worry about passing legislation because you can pass all the legislation you want to take the Chinese property. It's the enforcement. Let's use what's worked before, even here in New London. Let's just take it back by eminent domain. Hey John, did you read where? The situation with Fort Trumbull, they're, they're selling the properties back to, to if people want to build houses? Yes. Did you, have you seen, well, they had one hearing on it. Have you seen the article regarding the lead pipe, water pipes in New London? Well, by the way, what's going on in, on Jefferson Avenue? Is that all lead pipes? No, that's the roundabout. No, oh, they, no, no, no. All the way down by Jefferson, Jefferson and Bank. Jefferson Don't know. I've been avoiding that area because I understand it's a nightmare. Oh, they're, they're doing it. It is a nightmare. It's, I've been in that traffic and stuff. But no, I know about that. Now we want to get a, a grant or whatever for another $28, $30 million to do the Water Street garage. Not just and that. You know why they're doing that? They never yeah, came for through. for the pedestrian bridge. Right. Because what's going to happen there is the bridge is going to be built, and all of a sudden the Coast Guard Museum is going to run out of funding, but the bridge will exist. And we're now still get his ferry terminal, but there'll be no museum. Oh, don't worry. M Murphy will bring in another how many millions to finish up the museum. I mean, this whole thing with the uh, community center. We'd be better off trying to centralize all our, our city offices. What happened to that idea? Because they lost the property at Shaw's Cove, or that wasn't a, a good idea? All I of thought a sudden, they, they gave up on centralizing city offices? They we need know, to do that more than worrying about a community center. Right. You know, all right, answer me this. When you go past and don't, the don't apply for any boards and commissions because you no. won't get on them. D After, when you come in, into New London, you go past the police station, and then there's a big um, building that's for, you know, offices and stuff like that. And then you go a little further, and that's where you have the banks and the day buildings that are all connected, basically. Right. And they're all empty. So why you talk about centralizing New London for a lot of the stuff, take those three buildings, make it so you can go from one to the other, and put all the, all the places in there. I mean, th th what's Not that? Not to mention the parking you would have, Dennis, right underneath. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, it's I don't know. They just don't think. Well, we, we spent all this, this money on a high school that was built, I think, in the early 70s, yet we have a police station that was also built in the in the early 70s that we need a new one. Right. Where All would they you keep put doing is patching that place. Where would you put a new police station? Just where you were just talking about. Where? Just just move them down Eugene O'Neill oh. to the Citizen Savings Bank. You know what I think would be a good spot but you guys can d decide what's wrong with it is down at Fort Trumbull. There's a building there already. It's Potley Coast Guard and I don't know what else. 
But the bottom floor has spots where cars can drive in and get out and go into the offices down there. I think the first two floors of that building, which are empty at Fort Trumbull, would be an ideal police station. It has it's to be too, downtown. It's too far out of locale. It has to be downtown? No, it doesn't have to be downtown, but it, it, going out to Fort Trumbull, you might as well put it out in Hodges Square. No, I don't believe that. I mean, you're, you're going to need to consider expanding our, our emergency services. With all these apartment buildings that are being built, you're not going to be able to run this city on three fire departments. Um, oh, that's true. I believe that, How too. about part, build part of a, or a, a substation, police station, over I at mean, here the you, uh, you've got old Edgerton problems. School? You've got, now all of a sudden we're becoming the same like Flint, Michigan. Lord knows we're already the bridge port of the southeast. Uh, but you got, but you got a representative for the first and second district that wants to rename the river. Yeah, what a waste of time and money. Uh, is, is that the only thing this guy could come up with? Was he actually sent to the state so he could come up with a stupid idea to rename the, the Thames River? Uh, he should, he should be to, play, to please your, your major He should donors. be embarrassed. I John, think, he should just I think he should be he, embarrassed. You know, how many things can they come up, how many bills can they come up with that haven't already been out there? So as a representative, I'm sure your ideas of what you want to do can only go so far. Renaming the river is just to let the people know, hey, I'm here and I'm working for you. That, that's all it is. That river no, ain't going to get changed. No, 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 no. That river, I bet you that river does not get changed. The name's not going to get changed. No, first anymore. of all, it doesn't, he was mentioning how it's supposed to help the Mash and Tuckets. Okay, so. It doesn't so? go past their property at all. It goes past the Mohegan's okay, property. Okay, so I was just going to say. Oh, so it just doesn't impact New London. That's no, right. It, go. Let's go re Bring it back to its original name, the Pequot Colony. What? New London. It was called the Pequot Colony be before it became New London. Well, where were the Mohegans? Pequots are on the other side of the river. Is he going to rename Thames to... to well, let, let's take I'm back what we had the in the 1600s you think, you think the Mohegans property expanded all the way to the Ohio River. <laughs> Do you think the Mohegans are going to sit back and let them name the river after the Pequots? They hated each other. That's they true. were going rip you're well, one side to the other, about, killing each other. Yeah, you're talking so about they're going to say, oh, we Pequot, can go along with Eastern that name. Eastern Pequot, Mash and Tucket Pequot. And they them two are fighting among each other. That's right. That's so right. John, wasn't the property, wasn't the Fort Trumbull properties, if they ended up going back residential, that the people who yeah, had I to be that. were thrown out were the first ones to, to get those properties back if they wanted it? Should be, but it won't happen. Of no. course, it won't happen because this New London is corrupt as the day well, is long. You know, you could say the same thing to Eric when they built Ocean Beach. Why did when they rather than take that beach by that property by eminent domain, all those summer homes that used to be along Ocean Beach at before the 1938 hurricane, they yep. should have been allowed to go back. I mean, that's true. You have yeah, but I think John. No, John, Fort I think... Fort Trumbull's not the first time eminent domain was used in New London. Oh, uh, it's, it's, I think it's, it's still used. It's just a used. substantiated case because it involved, of what it involved. Let me ask you a question, John. If you had a house or a cottage or whatever on Ocean Beach before the 38 hurricane and you lived through that hurricane, would you want to build up there again? Knowing that... I don't know. I don't know what the after, situation was, but I well, mean, that property was taken... You know, you talk about Fort Trumbull. Ocean Beach came about because of eminent domain, too. I... That's what I'm saying. Oh, I, I'm I, just saying, Fort, you know, everybody says Fort Trumbull, Fort Trumbull, but, you know, eminent domain's been used several times. State Pier was taken by eminent domain. Yes. Yeah. But I didn't think um, Ocean Beach was. Because after the 38 hurricane in along the coast, Pequot Avenue, all that, you could buy them houses that were still standing. Well, Cheap. First of all, it was so devastation. You're right. A lot of people that own there probably didn't want to rebuild again. No. And who knows what the times were then if, the, if people even had insurance in order to rebuild. That's I'm very sure true, I'm sure there was no too. FEMA back in 38. I don't, you're right. I don't think they had flood insurance back then. I mean, basically, Social Security was just starting out thanks to FDR. Where would you cut in the federal budget if you could? The money we're sending over to Ukraine. When you look at the history of Ukraine, 
this is all, this is a. You know, we, we need to start doing something for the people that live here. Yes. And we got to do something for the seniors you know, we're, that we're live here. We're set, we, New York City sets up shelters for illegals, yet we have a big homeless problem. We, we, treat, our, we treat our vets and seniors like shit. You know, I've been, you read the thing about uh, Seaside, right? I'm sure you have. It's going to be a park. Oh. Yeah. Well, I started preaching about it being redone for veterans. Veteran hospitals. That come over to have That's some kind of issue from being in wars or yeah. whatever. And that would be an ideal place for them to rehab. We don't need another park. You've got one right down the street. Well, but last week. We brought that we, up. Somebody called us on that. And, and wasn't for them making it a park. You, but you, you, have a big, you have as much chance something happen at Seaside as you have stuff happening at Fort Trumbull. The state wants to take all those buildings down. Let's see how long it takes them to do it. Well, it's going to well, cost you more than 7000 This is Waterford. Everything gets done in Waterford on time and under budget. That's, yeah, but it's, it's becoming a park because Waterford residents don't want any other type of development in that neighborhood. Yeah, they don't want condos. They don't want traffic. They don't want anything. They don't. I mean, wait, wait, wait till they have traffic like they have at Harkness going in at the summertime when That's it becomes true. a beach. That you're very right. You're right. They're That's not going to be true. happy. That may, that may be. They may but be that fighting. might not. But that might not fly to begin with. Just because the state put up seven thousand dollars or seventy five hundred dollars towards making you know, it a park. Are they going to take care of the property like they do Harkness? If it wasn't for the friends of Harkness, Harkness Park would be like a disaster. And that's another thing I always say. When they, when they come up with these ideas, um, you know, they don't think about, I don't think they think about everything that's involved in it. I Who's mean, Waterford okay. would have to take over the park, right. but you've got to hire people. Well, go to the pedestrian bridge. Who's going to end up okay. taking care of that? Well, you know, funny you should say that. Oh, the pedestrian bridge is going to happen. Oh, yes, it is. But originally... Uh, it's not again, supposed it's like so much for listening to your constituents because twi at least twice now the people of this city said we don't want that bridge. And right. did we vote but on we that? We voted it down twice, John, and they don't care. Oh, they don't care about anything. It's no. Obvious. They, don't, they don't run by the charter. No. They haven't followed the charter for years. They appoint, they appoint people to committees and their applications don't even go before the admin committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, there's so many things we just touched on that I wanted I to go to. All um, right. I'll, I'll, I'll let you go so you guys All right, take care, John. Thanks for on. calling. Okay, before I get into New London stuff. Go ahead. I mean, I, I, can go through, I can go through this so much more, but go ahead. Okay. You know, for what you brought about. All right, so let me think here. Let's talk a little bit. All right. In the post, they also, McCarthy's wives, wise move, dumping destructive Democrats. Now, it's okay for Nancy Pelosi to get rid of Marjorie Taylor Greene, a Republican in Georgia, but it's not okay for McCarthy to get rid of Ilhan Omar, who is a disgusting person. She's an anti-Semite. She's a liar. Um, is she the one that... She's the one that, that married her brother. Yes. So they say. Yeah. And how come that? I thought it was against the law in this country. Maybe not. I thought religion. Sharia law was against the law in this country. I guarantee you, the and I'm not against the good Muslims. There are a lot of bad Muslims too. Just like there are a lot of bad Christians and Catholics and Jews and and Baptists and Buddhists. And but. Ilhan Omar is a bad person. Oh, she, the only reason she got elected was because the community, the Muslims that were in that, that live in Minnesota, is it Minnesota? Yeah. Okay. There's probably close to a million of them by now, I, I guess. Have, I don't know. But they voted, they had the power to get her elected. Of course. Now, how, do you ever ask yourself how all them Muslims ended up in that one spot? I know how all they ended up in. Wow. Obama brought them in from Somalia. I didn't know if you knew. But anyways, <laughs> well, I didn't know if you knew. I did. But she was, where is the, um, okay, I mean, th these are like letters to the, he got rid of 
the House shouldn't have to had shouldn't have had to remove Ilhan Omar from a single committee for her bigotry. Nancy Pelosi should have done so previously. This fact speaks volumes about Dems Democratic Party's tolerance of anti-Semitism and anti-Americanism. She is against. She's an anti-Semite, and she, she doesn't like America. The whole squad is an anti-Semite. I know. So why are they even allowed to be? Well, you know, there's even there's Jews out there that I, don't like Jews. Oh, sure. You've got. Uh, I mean, they they Chuck, they Chuck Schumer <laughs> is probably one of the biggest ones there. And then you same thing. I wasn't happy with McCarthy being voted in as Speaker. My opinion was that he was a do-nothing rhino. That said. He is doing what he promised. Reps Adam Schiff, who's a first-class liar, Eric Swalwell, who sleeps with Chinese diplomats, and Omar are now off sensitive committees. The Democrats cry when they want to do others is done to them. Bravo, Mr. Speaker, keep proving me wrong, and this country will be in a better place. Yeah. Know, these are all letters. I understand the world, this country actually, is changing dramatically yeah. where it's going to end up who knows but it would seem to me no matter what group if they were in charge you would not put people in positions of important secret stuff to protect your country when it's people that might whose country they came from might be the ones that want to come in here and take it over right and i'll say it again that's not that far-fetched no, it's but not I want to. No, you're, I wanna you're change, right. I want to change the topic. I found I, what I'm I was looking waiting for. for you. You were looking up something. All right. This uh, this was right up your alley, and probably you'd be surprised that I even brought it up. All right. So I don't know if you read this. I found this on Newsbreak. Uh, Czar or Cruz? I mean Cruz Manchin's. Cruz Manchin? Yeah. Proposed a bill blocking Biden's administration. Oh, that ain't the one I want. That's for gas. Now Manchin is a Democrat from West yeah, Virginia. Yeah. Well, that that was about gas stoves. <laughs> oh, well, that's, you know what, that's not going to happen because Biden actually said something right. We, he wasn't a gas gas stove. That's just okay, AOC this, and her mor This is what I wanted to talk to you about because I don't understand a lot of this. Um, again, on Newsbreak, reaction to Lamont's budget, UConn Prez hints at sports team pulling out of the XL Center. Now, my question to you is, does that mean there'll be no more sports? No. Okay. Um, could a car? Okay, I wrote these down. Can a university? How does a university make money? Exclude the state for this. Just, just the university itself. Through tuition. Yeah. Room and board. Yeah. Um, alumni. Yeah. Sending untold millions to them. Um, uh, I don't. I, I mean. Okay, so Adver yeah. maybe ad advertisements or something like that. I mean, businesses supporting them and stuff like that. That's how. I mean, let's put it this way: when you can pay the women's basketball coach five million dollars a year, okay, that's the other. They sports brings in a lot of money. Does it? That's I was wondering a if it lot actually of did money. that. Oh, you need some help? <laughs> you sure? The women basketball, well, both basketball teams this year. Yeah, they're. they're they're high levels and TV rights. They get paid by. Well, they probably pay. Oh. All no, right, so untold my, millions. So my point is, yes. Could UConn survive if it didn't get money from the state? Do I think they could survive? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Not only that, if. Colleges and universities. If well, the let's stick with Connecticut. Uh, well, Connecticut, but th because they get money from the federal government too. Yeah, and they also get it from the state. Right. A so big chunk of money from the state. A big chunk of money, and that supports because it's a state college. Now, if if the federal government would stop subsidizing colleges, universities altogether, tuition would have to come down. The only reason you know what else would have to come down salaries. Maybe. So I cannot understand. You've got a lot of people getting paid six-figure incomes, and not just a hundred thousand. We're talking two, three, four hundred thousand dollars, and they do nothing. I was just going to ask you that. Why? What makes a coach worth five million dollars? 
that they bring their team into national spotlight, that they become number one in, in the country, they win their tournaments, they're the number one in the country, more people want to come to that program, ergo you've got more uh, sponsors for that, for that team. So none of that would happen if, say, they made $2 million. If who made two million? If the coach, if the coach, could only make two million dollars. Yes. Is that going to make a difference? I mean, except no. three million wouldn't would no, still be with the state. No, but two years ago so or three years ago, he was asked, "Could you give up a million dollars because we because of COVID or whatever it was?" He goes, "Sure." Yeah. He took a million dollars less instead of. But you know, don't make million, it sound. Four million. Yeah, he but doesn't you, need the money anymore. I know, and you can't make a million sound like chump change. Well, although well, I guess you could. Well, a lot of people do now. Um, Go ahead. But could I? Yes, I think I was talking. I went to a doctor the, uh, yesterday, and we were just talking, and he's $300,000 in debt. Who is? This doctor I went to. Okay. 300000 300000 for medical. Th and I, we were talking about that, you know, me being a physical therapist and how it cost $3,000 a year when I went to college. And he go, I mean, we were talking about what it cost today. He goes forty thousand. I said, not Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac is seventy five thousand today. All of the, my friends who went to Quinnipiac would never be able to go to Quinnipiac today okay. if they had to um, go there. Stop subsidizing universities, colleges with federal dollars. The price of tuition would have to come down. It would almost seem like it would have to go up because they got a, they've got themselves in a position to where. They depend on that money from the state and, and, if, and the federal government. And if they don't get it, that's less money for them. Yeah, so so they're, they're not going to be able to pay. So why if, if every year does UConn go up in price? Because they get away with it. They get away. If the, if people this is that a state college. A state college right. shouldn't cost any more than mm. ten or $15,000 a year. How much is tuition at the University of Connecticut? It depends if you're in state or out state. Like thirty, thirty-five thousand. Yep, in state. Um, now I don't know if this is for a year. Uh, what does it say? Sixteen thousand three hundred thirty-two dollars. That's in state. Okay, New England or Regent twenty-five thousand three hundred fifty. But that ain't all. I was looking at this thing here, and um, it was saying how it depends. I can't find it now. Shit. Okay. But anyways, it it depends how much your income is. Um, if you're a low income, the tuition with aid, that's what I was trying to get at, with aid. Every one of these things is showed price-wise on how much you make, how much tuition is, with aid. Now, you got someone making over $100,000, one person or two people making even more than that, yeah. and they send the kid to college, yeah. with aid, they're paying like $30,000 a year. With aid, so when you hear the tuition is like fifty or sixty or seventy thousand dollars a year, that's with aid, government it, aid. Yes. Well, look, if you got that kind of money, and I know you know, hey, you should be able to, you know, get the deal, because you, just because it you got money. Depends upon the child as well. Two minutes. Son is of a bitch! I still didn't get to the. F is is the child an exceptional child with their grades from high school that they get scholarships? Okay, let's let me. Jump to one more thing, and you can have a minute. <laughs> you can have so a I showed you. Yes. Okay. This, folks, which you probably ain't going to be able to see, but it's the the bridge, the pedestrian bridge going across. It's a picture that was in um, in the, the agenda. No, this was in the agenda. You had to go back, way back on the computer, in, into the agenda. Okay. Um, and then this would come out. This is the whole project type thing here. Um, so originally, we were supposed to take care of the maintenance and the um, security. Even though it's the Coast Guard and, and Cross Sound Ferry and all that, you would think that they, they would should do pay it. for it. Exactly. So there's a story, and I won't get to today, of about they want the the mayor to see if he can get grant money to um, to help. With the parking garage because they got to connect it all. Right. Okay. Um, <coughs> so to upgrade the parking garage. So it made it. So it made years. it sound like. Oh, I think 
got to get all this done together and get the... But there's no way I win this. You're going to have next week. I know. Um, shit. Let me check. Well, I guess I'm not going to win. Is the grant mine, they're, they're applying for it again for the fifth time in five years or something like that. End of show. All right. We got to end the show. And I called, I called Passero on, the, on the, the bridge thing. Oh, yeah? Tonight. And he says, I asked him, I said, Mike, question is, is the city of New London going to cover the cost of maintenance and security for the pedestrian bridge? He wrote back to me and said, that is not worked out yet. My concept is share responsibility by all the stakeholders, Amtrak, uh, I okay, don't know, okay. Coast Guard, Cross Sound Ferry. Now, if that's the case, then we're closer to them taking care of it all. They should, but it's not worked out yet. No. But it is worked out because Benizio worked it out. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Come up to us and say hello. Next week's show might be a little different. Maybe, maybe. <laughs>